William Jackson can't go, how confident do you feel in your depth there, and who will you be looking at in particular to really step up? No, we feel comfortable. Uh, we do. You know, Benjamin Saints usually get an opportunity to start then, and uh, you know, feel good about that. Ron, you said earlier this week that you wanted to change some things, obviously made some personnel decisions. Do you feel like your team has understood your message, has heard you know, and seen you know, kind of your change? Yeah, I, I, they've seen it, that's for sure. I mean, the biggest thing, and again, guys, it goes back to putting people in position to, to succeed and, and help us succeed, and that's, that's kind of how we feel um, about the things that we've done. And Landon yesterday said he didn't like the move to linebacker, but he'll do it, I guess. What did you make of, of his comments? Well, it's just a matter of semantics. You know, because the truth of the matter is, if you look at the position he's at, based on formation, you can call him a safety, you can call him a buffalo nickel or a big nickel if you want, or you can call him a linebacker. It's just a matter of how you look at it. You know, and again, as I said, it's, it's about putting people in position to make plays, and we believe that with his skill set and, and how he plays, how active he is, how physical he is, uh, this is a, this is this is something that's going to help us and help him as well. Why is it important to you to maybe you know make that distinction that, that it's semantics to call him you know a linebacker or a safety? Just so everybody understands. I mean, it's you know apparently it's a point of discussion. So, you know, if you look at the defense and the way it's structured, it, it just depends on on what formation you're looking at. Just one more. Sorry. What sort of flexibility does having him drop down more give you with with Cam Curl? Well, it gives a lot of flexibility a lot of the defensive backs quite honestly, and, and with what Jack can call as far as the defense is concerned, too. You know, um, you have a guy that, that has a really good skill set in terms of playing downhill, attap- attacking the line of scrimmage, uh, blitzing, uh, covering backs and tight ends. And, and, and so what we've done is we've taken the skill set and put it in position and said, hey, this is a, a good opportunity. Have you been pretty happy with in terms of his mental adjustment oh, to yeah. playing a different role? Very happy. I mean, you know, you watch the way he practiced. You know, he, he's he's out there giving it his his all. So, you know, again, as I said, it's it's just a matter of how you look at it. And then you had said that Ryan Fitzpatrick was going to get an MRI this week. Do you have an update on him? It's coming. It, 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 he hasn't had the MRI yet. And lastly, with with Antonio, with the shin. I mean, is has anything changed with that after? Sunday, is it still just going to be a week-to-week similar situation? Yeah, for the most part. And, Ron, I guess just to ask about Curtis again, obviously it's another week he's out. You've said the other day that Monday was an important practice, but, you know, we're going through the week now. What's your sense of where he's at? And, again, is there any thought of possibly making a, making a move to IR or anything like that? No. Um, we're, we feel very comfortable with, with the guys we have in position in terms of guys that are playing right now, too. So... You know, when he's ready, when he's when he's stronger, he's 100% or close to it. Um, there'll be an opportunity to play him. And um, with regards to the offensive line, Brandon Scherf it seems like he's the, the projection was kind of where we're at now. But Cosme, I don't think we quite knew exactly where he's at. How close was he, perhaps? To I know we haven't seen him out there. So how close to is he, is he to getting to be able to play? Well, they're getting closer. I mean, again, it's it's hard to tell with these things, you know. And that's why you know, try not to put any any time frame on it. Um, and just trying to be fair to the player, you know, because they're doing everything they can. The doctors, the trainers, they're doing everything they can. It's just, you know, again, it's how they feel at, 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 the, uh, at the time. And obviously you have guys like Wes Schweitzer and Lucas who have come in and played before. It's one spot you guys have where you do have some, some proven guys to come in. How, how much does that make your life feel easier knowing, okay, bad, we have these guys out, but these two guys are able to step in? It makes you feel very, very good. Um, you know, because because uh, Lucas was gonna was gonna compete with Cosme during training camp, and unfortunately, you know, he ended up on the on the COVID list. Um, but knowing that he had done it before, you feel very very comfortable. Um, and when you look at at Wes, and you know who Wes is, very stout physical player, you feel very very comfortable with him because he mimics a lot of the things that Scherf does. I mean, he's a very good football player, so we feel very good about having guys like that around as as primary key backups. And I'm gonna monopolize the mic for one more sec. Uh, you're a Cal guy. Aaron Rodgers is a Cal guy. How will they actually know him? How, what kind of uh, connection have you had with him over the years? Obviously, you've been in the league a long time together, but also that relationship. Yeah. Well, you know, it is a common bond uh, and connection. And, and um, you know, I've always been a fan. I mean, from when, just times when he played at Cal and watched the good things that he did with the university and, and followed some of the things he's done in terms of his, his giving back to the, to the university. 
Um, and then, unfortunately, having to coach against him as many times as I've had, he's, he's such a, you know, such a, an iconic figure up in Green Bay now. And you know, he's one of those guys that obviously is a Hall of Famer in waiting. Um, and just, uh, you know, enjoyed my conversations and being around him. He, he really is a, a solid dude. Sorry to interrupt you and Ben's one-on-one uh, -on -one here, but with, with Blewett, um, do you think you could maybe change an approach or be more aggressive closer towards the end zone or anything with a kicker who's not as proven, or, or do you, will you trust him fully in all types of scenarios? Well, the, you know, the truth is you've got to trust him. I mean, based on what I did, you know, and, and the decision I made, you know, going forward, going to have to, and, and he's going to, you know, going to have to come out and, and perform and do his job. I mean, that, that's the truth of the matter. I mean, and, you know, he's replacing a guy that's a pretty solid kicker to begin with. Um, you know, the thing, as I said yesterday or the other day, is when, when we had him in and he performed during the, the tryouts, both of them, you know, he was solid. He, he really was. Um, got a very strong leg and, and, and showed some very good accuracy, and, and hopefully that, that carries over. Um, but, you know, and again, it comes down to it is, is I own the decision too. With Curtis, I guess what gives you belief that, Something with his health is going to improve right now with the same kind of approach that's being taken. Um, you know, probably more so because of the fact that, you know, he missed 10 days because of the protocols. And those were those were important days in terms of rehab. Um, now, having watched him and, and seen him, you know, I've been around him. I know uh, that, you know, eventually with him, he'll be back out there. It's just unfortunate, you know, that that that, you know, the injury cropped up the way it did. And then it, then it happened again. Um, hopefully, you know, we're, 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 we're in no rush. We're in no hurry. Um, you know, we just want to make sure when it's time for him to be out there, he's ready to roll. And lastly, I know he hasn't played a ton, but just how has his absence maybe limited Scott's play calling, if at all, or do you think it, it hasn't? I, I don't think it has, to be honest with you. Just, just because of the guys that have stepped up, you know, um, DeAndre Carter has had some of those plays that, that, were, that were pretty much scripted and mapped out. Um, you know, Dax Milne has come in and done some of those other things, too, that, that Curtis would normally do. Uh, we did see his value, though, when he did play. Uh, unfortunately, you know, because of the injuries to the other two, to, to Deami and, and, and Cam in the Atlanta game, we had to play Curtis a little bit more than we really wanted to. And, and, and as a result, you know, we, we, we lost him for a few games. But we saw his value and how, how dynamic he is. Ron, uh, Landon was saying that he, when he talked to you guys about the position move, he said one of the things he asked was about whether this is something where he's going to be down there more permanently or is it just because of some of the injuries. Just curious with you, is this something you see as being the rest of the season or is it something where maybe if you see some improvement from the linebacking core, he might move back to the back end? Well, I think it's something we'll see. Um, you know, to, to be forward with that, it, it's just, again, he's a guy that's got a very good skill set that fits that need. Um, and we'll see how it works out. If it, if it does, who knows? It could, it could be something that you know we're going to sit down and tell him and ask him. Say, hey, look, just so you know, I hope you're comfortable because if, if this fits him very well, you know that's something we'll do, and uh, we'll see what happens. And then we've seen Logan Thomas out at practices, getting some stretch and things of that nature. What have you seen from him in recent weeks? I believe he can be brought back up next week, if I remember correctly. But just what have you seen from him? And just when it comes to hamstring injuries, what is your typical approach to that? Because it can be kind of tricky. Well, with him, you know, it, it, because it's a hamstring, it's one of those you have to be really careful with and you've got to pay attention to. So, um, you know, everything and all the indicators are pointing towards that he's trending in the right direction. You know, he takes another step in terms of being able to get out there and start running. Um, and, and that's the big thing, is, is, is especially with a hamstring, is, is, you know, as long as he's comfortable and there's no pain and then the next day there's no issue, uh, we can take the next step and we'll see. All right. you, you have referenced the 10 days that Curtis had missed with the COVID, and obviously there's going to be a setback in his recovery. How, how, like, where was that the setback? Was it because when he came back, it's almost like he's rushing to get back and he presses it more, you know, does he stress it more after he comes back? I, from I that? could, I couldn't tell you that, John. Okay. Um, but I do know that, you know, not being able to work right. with the training staff at that point, that that was that was tough. Um, so it, it did set him back. And and if you're not really able to, you know, do the things you need to do, it it, it could create what pretty much has created this system, this situation to fester. And unfortunately, we don't have them, and and we'd love to have them out there, but it's just a matter of time. Do you remember, because like, at the time, do you remember how close he was before that point to being where he needed to be? Or Not really. I mean, you know, the, the, the best we'd seen him, obviously, was just before the Atlanta game. And, and, and we, did have a, we did have a plan. We did have a, a pitch count, basically. And unfortunately, like I said, with the injuries to the other two guys, 
we were kind of put in a situation where we had to have him on the field. I meant before those 10 days in the summer. Yeah, and, and, and again, I, like I said, the best we had seen him was, was, okay. was oh, the Atlanta, okay, gotcha. before the Atlanta game. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you. No, um, this is all. This is purely a medical decision. I mean, at, at, you know, the, the 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 doctors, the trainers, and Logan will, you know, they'll be the ones that'll be able to step in and tell. I mean, that's one thing to understand. This, I, I will not do anything if the doctors or the trainers tell me no, or the player for that matter. Um, I've never done that in terms of trying to push a guy into the field. Nobody, nobody knows but the player, really, truly. Yeah, Williams coming along. Um, he's a player. He's been doing certain things a certain way. Um, for five years, actually. I mean, that's a long time uh, to do one thing. So he's been doing one thing for five years and kind of changing some technique things um, that, you know, he's still still a work in progress, as we all are. But, you know, you, you, you don't change overnight. And that's the, the sentiment that I tell the guys is the day you plant the seed, you don't reap the harvest. So it's, it is a work in progress, and it will continue to be a work in progress, not just for him, but for every single body that we have, um, for all the new players that we have, uh, doing things the way that we're doing, the techniques that we teach, and, and so on and so forth. But he, he is coming along. What are some of the techniques that have maybe been a bigger transition for him than guys who have come from different backgrounds? Uh, just, just the press technique, the way we play press technique is a little different than the way that they played it uh, in uh, – in Cincinnati, so just trying to master that every day, and that just comes with repetition every single day. And with when you have a guy like that who has been doing it one way and had some success with it, what's the balance between changing him to fit the system and maybe allowing him to do some of the things that he had done before? Well, that's a very good question. So we we have a certain way that we do things, and then you want to try to finesse it to where it's not completely foreign. Um, and with his skill set um, that he has with his long arms, with his length, with his speed. Um, I think the, the technique would be very advantageous for him to use. Um, and so it's, it's a fine line of, of kind of what he used to do and what we did and, and trying to marry the two together and not just completely change him in what he's been because he's been a very good corner for a long time in this league. And then in zone, what's the adjustment there? Because I know, it's like, I know he played zone in Cincinnati. It's not like they never played it. What is the adjustment there for him in this particular scheme? Um, it's, it's just a little, little different, just understanding where my eyes need to be, um, um, the way with some of the zone techniques that we use, the zones that we play, just understanding exactly what I need to see, um, what do I need to pick up in my peripheral vision, and all those type of things as far as uh, relating to the route concepts that we're getting based off of what the offense is doing. And then last thing, Landon Collins, expanded role, whatever you want to call him, linebacker safety, both, whatever. Um, how has he handled that? Uh, he's been extremely professional. Um, he's he's actually been a joy to work with. So uh, um, his, his new role, you know, I'm sure has been talked about last week. But um, you know, putting him, our goal as coaches is to put our players in the best position to have success. And so I think that's what we're doing. Um, you know, he he he's a very downhill attacking style player, and so we want to utilize that and play to his strengths. So. Um, you know, he's not a linebacker. He meets in my room. He's with the safeties. He's still a safety. He doesn't meet with Steve Russ. Um, but, you know, having him, his role catered, because he does such a great job in the box reading. Um, you know, this past game, he made uh, um, some really nice plays on the, on the on the one reverse that Cole ends up knocking out, he does a, a tremendous job on that. They run a slice belly, he slides through, gets a tackle for loss. So those type of plays that we can get out of Landon when he's near the line of scrimmage. So we're just trying to put players in position for them to max out their success. Um, since we're talking about like labels of position, uh, Cam Curl's a guy who last year was the, the, the Buffalo nickel, then he's playing strong safety. But now this year, he's, he, you guys have played him a lot deep center field last game. He's got corner skills maybe he's not a guy that has a label but what do you see out of what is he at this point in his second season he's a defensive back <laughs> he, I mean he, he he's kind of a jack of all trades you know he's, he's not just this or just that or just this um, you know can't, he has a, a, a unique skill set to where okay he can go out there and cover a receiver if you need him to cover tight end he could go in there and play nickel he can play back deep so he, he has a very unique skill set um, and, and I think he's been doing a, a tremendous job for us uh, over the last year and a half. Is there something to be said for versatility? Clearly is important. Clearly that's something that the head coach values. But at some point, like instead of playing here, there, and everywhere, do the, you know, focus on this spot, looking at the world from these angles. Is there something 
to that, or is that sort of overstated to hone in on like one or two specific uh, kind of spots? Um, you know, for, for, for a guy of his magnitude, because he, he's extremely intelligent. Um, he, he's a very sharp, he, like he's just got football smarts. He's a very savvy player to be as young as he is. He's extremely savvy. And he has the mental capability to, to, to be able to bounce from a nickel and then the very next play go to dime and then the very next play go to strong safety. Then the very next play slide over the free safety. So he, he has an ability that, that a lot of players can't do. Um, but he has that capability, which I, I think creates so much value for him when you have a player like that. And lastly, a question for, for you. You had some interesting opportunities this offseason to, to have some interviews and things like that. Having seen that, having gotten to that point, your job is to coach the DBs. But as you're going through these meetings, do you, I don't know, look to pick the brain more of Jack Del Rio or Ron from the perspective of maybe what the next step could be for you? Or how have you taken that, that experience, those interview experiences into this year and try to absorb more? Oh, well, you know, I, I had great conversations with, with Jack. You know, Jack was in the same position um, as a position coach. And then, you know, he accelerated fast to a defensive coordinator, then head coach. So he, he's a guy that I kind of uh, pick his brain and talk to him about the process and starting to look at things from a coordinator standpoint and not just a, a defensive back, you know, seeing the entire picture, understanding exactly what it is that everyone's doing, exactly what it is that we're, we're trying to accomplish with every single call and not just the back in. Taking a step back, like in the in the bigger picture, what do you think has maybe led to or been some of those main factors for maybe your unit not playing up to where you'd hope or expect them to be so far? Um, you know, it it kind of reminds me of last season. Uh, it, it, it really does. You know, when you implement a brand new system, uh, the continuity, um, the verbiage, the communication, and everybody's like, oh, well, this is the second year in the season in, 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 the, in, in the defense. It's my second year in the defense, but there's five brand new defensive backs in the back end, I don't think. And that, I'm not making an excuse. I'm, I'm never a guy that makes an excuse, but it's, it's very similar to last season. We, kinda, we, we had a little rookies, rough patch at the beginning of the season, and then we calmed down and we got there. So it's, it's no different. You got a brand new corner in Will Jackson. You have a brand new corner in St. Juice. You have a brand new nickel in Kendall, even though it's his second year in the system, but it's his first year at the nickel spot. Then you got a brand new safety in Bobby. And then Landon missed 11 games last year. So basically, it's a brand new safety in the system. So just building that continuity, kind of like last season when we start, we kind of started off kind of rough last season. Um, and it just kind of reminds me of that. And, and the continuity will come. Um, I, I have the utmost confidence in my group. I wouldn't change any of them. I, I wouldn't trade them out for anybody because I believe in them that much. And just making sure that we're on the right page um, from the communication. It's more of a communication thing, making sure the communication is exactly where it needs to be on every single play, every single snap. If the struggles are similar, are you finding similar effectiveness with the same answers that you had last year? Absolutely, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm excited with, with the group that we have. And like I said, um, we will play better. We have to play better. But we, we, we definitely will play better in the secondary, in the back end. And that just that, that, that kind of comes with time a little bit with the building that continuity when you got five new guys at different positions in a brand new scheme. So I, I, that is one thing that I am not worried about one bit. And, and lastly, what specific solutions are there any that you can share that, that you're using to, to make this group get to where you need them to be? Oh, we just, well, I mean, we, we sit there and talk. We, we communicate in the meeting room. So, I mean, if, if, we, if we happen to miscommunicate, okay, what, what do we see here? It's more of a conversation in our room. Okay, all right, well, I, I can see how you saw that, but this is how this needs to be played. Like I said, it's guys that first time in the system, on, especially on the outside, it's their first time. So, understanding exactly the way it should be seen and seeing, seeing how they see it, but then making sure they see it the way that we see it and the way things should be played in the back end. So for guys on the back end, is this a, is this a complex defense, more complex than others? Uh, I, I think all defenses are pretty much the same. Um, for me, the biggest thing is, 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 is verbiage for the most part. Because, I mean, I guess every team probably – play some version of cover three, they play some version of cover two, some version of quarters. And it's probably more the language, the lingo, and the communication aspect of it. But everybody pretty much does the same thing. Having switched teams yourself as a player, does that help you in trying to 
communicate this stuff to guys now on and helping them transition to a new system? Yeah, absolutely. You know, having um, I've, I played on four different teams over my career, and so you know, learning a new system and then learning another system and then coming back and learning this system. So yeah, having some familiarity with it, it does help a little. Thank you. Are there signs uh, like what do you what have you seen? Um, that allows you to have confidence that this will be turned around? Or like, what are some areas that you guys have improved on kind of over the first six weeks and you see that signs of growth? Well, you know what, this, this past game, I, I think this past game showed a lot of signs. I mean, granted we didn't win the game against Kansas City, but there were a lot of positives that came out of that game. I mean, that, that, that's an explosive team, as we all know. And I mean, they had 10 points going into five minutes left to go in the third quarter. Um, so those are things that we can build off of. We played our zone coverages really well, I thought, um, in the very beginning parts of the game, uh, the first half and even in the second half. So seeing that is very promising. The guys are kind of starting to understand and pick it up and, and, and knowing exactly what it is they're being asked to do and making sure that there is absolutely zero gray for anybody. When zones are working well. Like what is clicking? Is it guys in their space? The technique that doesn't allow the receiver to get it's, outside? Like, it's, it's, it's kind of everything. R Rush and cover work together. That's a phrase that we use in our in our uh, in our room now um, throughout the entire defense. Rush and coverage works together. So the rush has to be on point, and the coverage needs. If the coverage is on point, it allows the rush to get there. If the rush is on point, it allows the uh, the guys in the back end to be able to break up and play. So they go hand in hand. You can't have one without the other. It's like just eating a peanut butter sandwich. No, you put jelly on it. You know what I mean? So you got you to gotta have both. And so I, I think once we really start gelling that thing, um, we'll be just fine. Uh, you played high school football in Georgia. Uh, yeah. The state has gotten like a lot more five-star recruits in the last you know, 10 or so years. Did you notice like the quality of the high school football improving? And if so, how do you think that helped you maybe – uh, you know, launch your college career and, and get to the pros? Yeah, I think uh, just the down south in general is a, is a good place for football. Just like un unlike the, uh, the north where uh, they take, they take, they kind of take football off in the spring. We play year round. So it's more talent being produced there and we kind of just like, like it a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> Did you notice when you got to college, like maybe you had a different high school experience than, than some of your teammates? A lot of people uh, just, with me going to Michigan State out of high school, with that being in the north, a lot of those kids was from that from that area. They didn't play football year round, so spring football in colleges was was new to them. When it wasn't so much to me. And do you still follow like I guess any Georgia Atlanta high school ball at all? Or I mean, of course, my my high school Stevenson High School. Uh, I try to pay attention to them uh, as much as I can. Chris Harris was saying that the re part of the reason the secondary is playing better is because the rush is also getting there now. Just what have you noticed kind of with the improvement up front and maybe the coordinated rush of you guys kind of all being on the same page? Yeah, I mean, uh, the rush and coverage works together. So if the coverage is doing good, it's probably because of the rush. And if the rush is doing good, it's probably because of the coverage. You are still a young, developing player, so I'm curious if there's some areas in your game this year that you feel you've started to really kind of refine or click with. I mean, um, I'm still sharpening all, all the tools in my game, whether it's the run game and the pass game, and really just noticing how teams trying to attack us and noticing how certain tendencies of the alignment and all that type of stuff. So I kind of just want to sharpen my all-around game, not, not necessarily something particular. Looking at the situation, the third and 10, where you get called for offsides, what is it when you're going to the line, like what are you looking at to make sure you're lining up offsides or whatever? Because you obviously don't want to line up offsides. So what's the, what do you go through there? And then how does that happen? And then when you realize it, what, you know, how does that make you feel, I guess? Yeah, generally uh, it was just an undisciplined play by me. Generally, uh, you look at the ball and you want to have your hand, have your hand in front of your eyes and you not off size. Usually the the ref comes up to you and uh, lets you know, hey, back up a little bit. You know, you're getting a little, getting a little close. That game, I'm not making any excuses. They didn't do it, so it happens. Um, you and Chase at different times have lined up on either side of the well, left end or right end. And lately, it feels like it's more maybe mid more on the right. 
Do you have a, is there a, a preference to you? I mean, some guys just have a better feel for one way or the other. No, it's, it's not uh, necessarily a, a preference. I mean, we kind of just sticking sticking to one side now. So I mean, throughout the game, I might move over move over to his side. We just kind of give and take, just uh, go with the flow of the game. Is there, from a technique perspective, is it just basically kind of the same, or is there a different thing because you're probably <coughs> step pushing off with a you know, different foot? Or I mean, like it's, it's it's definitely different. Uh, most guys is right hand dominant, left hand dominant. So it's, I mean, it's it's just like moving a right tackle to a left to a to a um, from a left tackle. It's, it's different, but uh, the more dynamic you be, I think the more value you bring to the game. And sort of to, to follow up on John's point, just that you're a young guy still developing. What surprised you the most this year? Just as you've kind of gone through this uh, for you as an individual, but for the line as a whole, what's kind of surprised you the most this year? Just as a, just the whole year was surprised me. Anything for, for you out there in particular, just what has been surprising to you about just this season and, and just what you're kind of learning out there on the field? Uh, I mean, not many surprises. I mean, of course, I would like to be playing better as a, as a defense, uh, but not really any surprises. I mean, this game is full of ups and downs, so you just got to take them how they come. To your point about playing better, what is kind of the mood of the whole unit? It's been six games, and it's some of the same results keep popping up. How are you guys sticking together, and who's kind of leading that charge? I mean, we're just, we're just talking about staying together as, as a team. Uh, of course, we're leaning on our, uh, our leaders, John and, uh, John and Chase. And we just, we're just preaching staying together as a team, not really worried about what the outside has, has, has an opinion on. We're just kind of sticking together. And a big thing this year is you guys are playing a lot of, you know, really established quarterbacks. And maybe last year the schedule didn't have as many. Have you noticed just a difference in playing against Herbert and Mahomes and you got Rodgers this weekend? And maybe what's the biggest difference between an offense like that versus one without a, you know, star quarterback? Uh, I mean, it's definitely a, a difference. I mean, really just not even harder, not even harder quarterbacks. I just feel like we had a more of a more of a difficult schedule. But it's the, it's the NFL. Everybody is talented. Everybody gets paid to do their job. So you just got to bring your A game every week. Montez, you guys uh, held the Chiefs last week to 10 points in the first half. Obviously, this is the two-time AFC champion. How do you guys carry what you guys did in the first half with the three turnovers into the second half? How do you get a complete game that looks like that? Yeah, that's that's what we've been uh, talking about, to strain for 60 minutes. Um, and we've even been talking about that in, in practice. We start off practice good, we need to end practice good also. So we're just talking about keeping the same mentality for, for, for 60 minutes and just making those halftime adjustments and really honing in on them. Why was it? Why was everything clicking so well in the first half? Like just sort, sort of what was the practice week like? Just what was it that allowed you guys to, su to succeed the way that you all did in the first half? I mean, we was, we was getting turnovers. So those guys in the back end was making plays because uh, apparently uh, because of the rush, really. I mean, so yeah. We just need to harp on on that, just getting turnovers and getting off the ball and getting off the field on third down, really.